Hello, I'm Joe Barksdale. I just finished looking at a book from Playboy about uh, 50 years of sexy. You know what's really sexy? Talking about mental health in the urban communities. You wanna really turn your woman on? Don't ask her what she's wearing. Ask her how she's feeling on the inside. Mm -hmm. Ladies, you looking for a man? You need to be looking for the motivations that turn that man into the man that he is today. There's always a story underneath the story. So, if you're trying to get underneath somebody's bed sheets, get underneath their mind first. Let's make talking about mental health sexy. A whole hundred tried to kill me. And I and I and I survived it. For some people, pain lasts forever. This base level autism is difficulty understanding yourself and your emotions, difficulty understanding other people and their emotions. My wife and I don't have a prenup. <laughs> because as the parent, you're supposed to know better. And maybe that's why I still don't have kids, right? Because until I feel like I'm really rich and able to give them everything, or a stable home, I don't want to be a baby mama. What's going on, everybody? And we're going to talk about autism. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Joe actually has autism, correct? Mm -hmm. now, He's autistic. Autistic, mm -hmm. right? So. Go ahead. I have so many questions, but can you have? Because to be level. honest, yeah, based up because I would have never guessed that you were autistic at all or had any form of it. You know what I'm saying? So, so there's, a, there's a spectrum of autism. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the term Asperger's. Like, oh, this person has Asperger's. That used to be what is now known as high functioning autism, but there's still a spectrum of autistic people. At his base level, autism is difficulty understanding yourself and your emotions, difficulty understanding other people and their emotions. So like, you're very literal, it's hard to put yourself in other people's shoes. Sometimes people think because of that, like we lack empathy, the reality of the situation is we have so much empathy that we have to calm ourselves from the reaction before we react to whatever we're empathizing with. I might be autistic myself. That's deep. I mean, because I Actually, have empathy a lot. They, uh, uh, we can come back to that. What happened to you? I mean, I, I just really see things from such a logical standpoint. I'm not. It's not about me right now. But um, <laughs> oh, so, <laughs> so, um, so being that you do have, which first of all, I want to say, like, I know me and probably everybody else definitely commend you because getting some of the accolades that you did, I for me, and this is coming from a, I hate to say, it, but like a ignorant standpoint because I don't know. I never even knew that there was any professional athletes that were autistic. Yeah, me neither. You know, okay. <laughs> Until I got diagnosed. <laughs> me neither. <laughs> so let me, can I ask you a question? Um, oh yeah, whatever. So you have um, children, right? Two? Mm -hmm. Two daughters. Okay, so what is it like being a parent um, and having, aut or being autistic as well? Is it like any challenges or difficulties that you may not really. And I mean, granted, I kind of got the cheat code to parenting, especially raising girls. Kobe Bryant was a mentor of mine before he died. Mm. And he taught me about like, like most of the things that I do with my daughters now are things that he's taught me before. Um, but it's not hard to create an emotional attachment to something that you help create, in my opinion. And when you create that emotional attachment, you want to be the best you for that yeah. kid, for your family. And so I do do intensive therapy because I'm also mentally ill. I go to therapy twice a week. I'm on medicine. I see a psychiatrist once a month. Um, and that is part of me being the best me that I can be for the kids. Yeah. So that's dope. But therapy is good though. Yeah. I mean, next to whatever the problem is, to be able to talk to somebody Agreed. and to get that out and then not from a biased standpoint. So, I mean, that's great. So I hope people don't look at somebody taking therapy and doing all that. They, they think that that's crazy. That's actually something that could be a release mechanism and mm -hmm. make you feel more comfortable with life and feeling it more. But that's one of the reasons I talk about it so much. Kind of the same thing with the breast cancer thing. Like mm -hmm. the more you say it, the more normal it becomes. Yeah. The more normal it becomes. Yeah. yeah. Like like I'm saying, this is like all new to me. Um, I got mad questions for you though, right? Uh, I'm here. So you said that you <laughs> you were diag you found out when you were diagnosed, right? Were you diagnosed at what age? Twenty. Wow. Eight. Twenty seven. Damn, bro. So this was wait, after so you were out the league. Mm -hmm. So you wait. Whoa. So you almost went three decades. Okay, wait. I'm sorry. I was mm -hmm. diagnosed at thirty. I am thirty three. Okay. 
Sorry, I was tripping earlier. Because <laughs> when I when I said that to you, I was like, dog, I swear I'm 33. So I am 33. I was diagnosed at 30. Okay. So you went three decades before even knowing that you were diagnosed. Yeah, before knowing I was autistic, yeah. But wow. what did you think was going on was, with you? I thought so. I mean, as you can imagine, you got parents raising a kid that don't, you know, the same things they always ask, like, what's wrong with you? Are you stupid? Mm. Those kind of things. Uh, mm. Those are voices I still hear now, but mm. that was probably the main thing. I mean, on top of just, there were, granted, there were certain things that should not have happened to me when I was a kid. Like, my grandma left me in a car, a running car one time, and um, told me not to touch anything. I'm three. So, of course, I go touch something. My grandma beat the shit out of me at home after walking past both of my parents. You remember that? Oh, yeah. That was like my first childhood memory. Whenever you go through these kind of traumatic events and things like that, it's even harder to present yourself as who you are because there's still a part of you that's recovering from other things that don't even have anything to do with the autism. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Now. Just like, how did you get to a point where you're like, I need to see a doctor about this? Oh, my therapist told me. Uh, now, granted, she had been observing me for three years at the time, but I remember having a conversation with her about, like, I hate people. I don't like being around people. And she's like, why don't you like being around people? Because I always feel like I'm trying to be who I'm supposed to be, who, like, I'm trying to, like, act human the way humans are supposed to act, but I always feel like there's somebody that's going to realize, like, nah, you're, like, you're different than everybody else. You're not human. So when you found out that you was autistic, mm -hmm. Did it make you feel more comfortable? Like I knew something was wrong. I'm not crazy. It's yeah. just, it's, this is what it was. Yeah. Right? So those voices that you hear in your head from when they said those mean things, do you just like, do you think now like, I right, that was just a mistake on their part and I see why they thought that, but I had this problem? It's hard for autistic people to forgive. Mm. Like very hard. It is? Okay. Yeah. Like that's something I learned with my therapist. We were talking about like, letting things go in the past and that kind of thing. She works with other autistic clients and that's something that we all seem to struggle with. I don't know why. Maybe it's like you were talking about earlier, like the logical thing, like, yeah, but you wronged me. And it's like, yeah, but I'm sorry, but I, I, you still wrong. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> still that's wrong. That's fantastic, but you still wrong. You know what I'm saying? If, if it was me, which is not, if, if I found out later on that there was something wrong, and I'm going to take this to my mom, my mom, she got memory problems, right? Mm -hmm. So it was many years that we argued, and I'll be like, yo, she fucking lied to me. Mm -hmm. Like, she did this, but then when I found out later on she had a memory problem, everything was forgiven by me. And then we showed the picture of me and her talking. She said, I don't remember being on a speedboat. And I, and I went home feeling bad for her that all of, these, that all of this time that I got mad at her thinking that she was saying this stuff to me wasn't reality, it was just her memory. So I'm saying from you, like, yeah, kids and parents and... I was, so I was diagnosed with two mental illnesses before the autism. Okay. I came out about two it. Mental two mental before illnesses before the autism. Before the autism. I came out about it in the LA Times. I tried to have like a meeting with my family, my immediate family, my dad, my brother, my mom. Because uh, they kept, you know, everybody's calling you trying to figure out, you know, some dude that everybody assumed was just super happy is suicidal. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So I tried to have a meeting with my family to kind of like go over some of these things. And I told my parents about it. Uh, my dad showed up. My brother showed up. My mom said she was comfortable in her pajamas. She knew about it the day before, but she said she was comfortable in her pajamas and she ain't feel like coming, coming to my more expensive house in the suburbs. And you ain't appreciate that. That hurts your feelings. It me off. I mean, you mm -hmm. one of the reasons, you know, one of the main reasons I'm mentally ill. Yeah. Like, one of the main reasons. That's you know why I mean? she not showing up. Maybe. That's an excuse. Yeah. I mean, I, Come on, that's guilt. Come on. I mean, if, 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 if yeah. we talking about it, but I'm who, saying, who wants to face, who wants to face their guilt? Yeah. But what about the hurt child? And yeah, I'm not, I'm not disagreeing about that, yeah. but what about the hurt family member, well, the hurt mother that don't want to face that? She well, can't even she see even you being hurt. It. I get all because that. Because she's someone who's tried to kill themselves a couple of times, you at least owe me a f***ing conversation. Did she ever try to kill herself? You don't know. I don't know. There you go. You don't know. Maybe <laughs> she's suffering. From That's some of the things problem. that you can't yeah, suffer but, from. Yeah, you but you're not about from. to just sit here and, I, this, like, I get what you're, you're not about to sit here and just, like, make, oh, well, I'm yeah, f***ing. So that's the reason you f***ing. That's f***ing up. Yeah. That's yeah. Accountability. I was molested when I was younger. Mm -hmm. My kids ain't getting molested. Yeah. I'm not yeah. f***ing them up like I'm f***ing up. And yeah. they ain't gonna ever meet my mama.
You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, so that excuse should only go so far. Right. And if I got to be the one to break the generational curse in my line, then so be it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Like I don't break strides yeah. to me, yeah. bro. I'm trying. I mean, but the thing about it is, it sounds good when we talking right now. But it's not like really when I need a dad to talk to, but... or when I have an issue, I don't got nobody to call. Like the one dude I did, the two dudes I did call you both died. You do got with somebody to call. Wife. Wait, wait, talking about you do got somebody to call. Who? Your wife. You the can't... one that you depend on. You, I, I, okay, let me say this okay, about my ahead. wife. My wife is not a therapist. Okay. And there are times that I go into psychotic depression. Okay. Mm. She's not a trained professional. Like, there are certain things she can't help with. She's a human like everybody else. Yeah. You know what I mean? So when you're going through it, you don't, you're not conscious to be like, I know what I'm going through, and you try to bring yourself out, out that feeling because it's you know like it? I know what I'm going through. I should kill myself now before I got to go through it again. Damn. Because it's coming again. And that's the thing that people don't want to talk about. Like, mm-hmm. when you have these episodes or these issues or whatever, like, it's not the one issue. It's the fact that, like, after your worst day, you realize there's going to be another bad one. Mm. I mean, shit, today was a terrible day for me. Or it would have been a, another good one. I, I, that, be, I, I was just, I was just yeah. about to say that. Or it could be another but, good one, because now... I was just about to say that. But I'm just saying, with the laws of, like, statistics and all that... I get what he's saying. Like, if your best days are ahead of you, so are your worst. And if the shit already behind you is, like, you know, caused you to be mentally ill... Mm-hmm. You're not trying to go see what the worst is gonna be. You don't want to see you, what the new bottom is. Yeah, I just want to get off the ride. Uh, I get it. Yeah. What um mental illnesses, <clears throat> if you don't mind? Depression wait. and anxiety. And it's funny because I used to not tell people about the anxiety till I found out that like mad people got anxiety. Too. I didn't know that. I didn't know anxiety what? had a suicide rate, bro. Anxiety crazy. Wait, wait, Sometimes you just be too nervous to. Really anxiety is cr- anxiety is crazy is out crazy. here. Wait, what's, you said you didn't know until you found out about the suicide rate for anxiety, right? Yeah, because, you, you know, I do the comedy, and I was, like, writing a joke about it. And I'm like, well, at least, at least let me research anxiety. Oh, shit. It was, you know. It's serious. Big, big deal. Or committing suicide due to anxiety. Or, like, heart attacks, strokes. Damn. You know. Like, anxiety oh, just the whole One gamut. Of the causes. Yeah, yeah. Gamut of causes. So, um, we were talking about, or we kind of touched on it briefly about, um, you know, when you're with your wife and you're going through you know, some of, you called it a psychotic episode? Yeah. Right? That's what it was called? Psychosis. Psychosis. Or delusions. Yeah. Or delusions. So what is something that, because obviously you're able to have, uh, not able, that sounds like crazy, but obviously uh, you have, you know, this is just for the people who don't know. You have a functioning, good, healthy relationship. Mm-hmm. You're a, and, a, and parent, you're a parent as well. Mm-hmm. So somebody who's dating somebody who, you know, maybe they find out that their uh, significant other may have, or you know, maybe within their marriage they get diagnosed. Communication challenges. Yeah. The same kind of, and that's why I know it so well. The same kind of communication issues y'all were having were answering different questions and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> but like, that's my marriage. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what he's not in a bad way. <laughs> not in a bad way. But like, that's my marriage. Like. We you know. really actually communicate well. I don't know what's going on today. I'm... Sometimes you have off days, but like that's that's what it is. Like, I'll, I'll be trying to say something to my wife. Okay, here's an example. We were on the plane today. I'm coming out the bathroom, and there was a dude, you know, me and my wife are on the plane. She's standing up so I can get in the window seat. I see this old dude behind her, and I'm just like, oh, let the old dude come real quick. So she sat back down, got back up. I got in the seat. She sat down and said, hey, you way nicer than I am. Like, that's how it started. And I was just like, who the f- are you calling a f-? Like, that was my response. Like, because that's how, that's what I heard. Because that's what I heard. I would have figured the same way, though. Because that's what I heard. Like, when somebody say, like, are you nice he to cheating me? on you, you sis? You better than me, you dumb. <laughs> Like, you know what I'm saying? I so that's what I heard way. in my mind. I'm like, who But I get it, though. But she understands. She's like, I didn't so, mean it so that did way. So it, did, it, did it escalate into an argument, or she understood that's just the way you are? I tried to turn it into an argument. But she wasn't having You it. tried to turn it into an argument? So and she dog. wasn't I'm having I'm like, bro, it. you ain't about to just spit in my face on this plane. Like, so wait, what'd you what say? What happened was, I woke up from a nap. I had to go to the bathroom. You know, I'm trying to be considerate of other people. I come sit back down. Hey, nicer than me. What does that mean? Who are you talking to? Yeah, like... So what was so the... Because in Detroit, where we from, you nicer than me means you a stupid... Like... Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, but how did y'all solve it? Yeah. What, what was the end to it? Did she just give up, or did I you... There, was it a fight? Up to this interview. I'm pretty sure we'll talk about it some more when I get back in the car. Wow. You might meet 
me and him, or say we're friends, and we'd be like, yo, Joe, that, yo, I understand what you're thinking, but it wasn't like that. Do you ever take that and then be I like, yo, babe, I apologize. <laughs> Wait, what? I can't put myself in other people's shoes. All I can... What if we're putting ourselves in your shoes? No, that's fine. But I'm saying I couldn't put myself in her <laughs> shoes to see it from her point of view. Ever. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, Ever. like, in my, in my mind, like, I was verbally slapped in the face, and that just is what it you is. You still think that way right now? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Wait. It's not like I'm mad about it. Like, we talked about it and all that. And, like, people kept telling me all the time, like, you're too nice. You ain't gonna ever do anything with football because you're too nice. You're too soft. You're too nice. You're too soft. Yeah. So, that's what I heard. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, dog, I retired from football. I shouldn't be hearing about all no more but in my mind like and here I am getting shot on by my wife on the airplane you know what I'm saying like that's just in my mind I'm not saying it's right or wrong I'm got just you. trying to communicate how I felt got you um but as you can imagine I mean when you talk about like post-traumatic stress disorder like my mom like we already talked about it my mom was very critical of me yeah you know um so from my point of view I was a child again in my mom's household being criticized all over yeah, I'm yeah. about to get beat soon okay in my mind, everybody my age feels so intimidated by me. Maybe because they of where scared. I came from. I get that. But Maybe I'm just they scared saying, like, because they don't want you to take it the wrong way. Maybe. But Do regardless, you feel like I don't have that. Therapy has been helping you because you said you go to therapy two times a week and then a I psychiatrist. So. Yeah. Do you feel like it has given you different perspectives, though, to where you might have even handled things? Yeah. Crazily, or do you feel like yeah. it's not really? I would say like the conversation me and Esso had in the parking lot was a very, very, very positive result of therapy. Um, this goes back to Ace point because I I genuinely agree with him and you. It is very rare for men to have good men friends. For yeah, sure. and and you know I've thank God because I've been blessed with some you know. Um, so I can't imagine it. But when I hear like some of the things that you're telling me, like there's people that I've spoken to like throughout my years, and I realize like yo, they'll tell me like basically their friends. Ain't mm -hmm. That's not what they're saying, but but because of the result of it, that's what it is. Oh yeah, I would never call any of my friends if I was really about to kill myself. It's not a secret. Like if you know me, yeah. you know I don't want to be alive. Like if <laughs> if you really know me, you know I don't want to be here. I mean it just. <laughs> it is what it is. So where like, you want to be? Dead. Yeah. Like, I'm tired of living in a world that wasn't built for me and being expected to, like, conform into it and fit. I'm a big black dude that's autistic, that's mentally ill. No one ever understands what the fuck I'm trying to say. Yeah. Everything I say is, like, so jarring to people that when I do try to be truthful with somebody, they always assume that I'm about to go kill myself. And it's just, I'm tired. Can like, I be honest with you real quick? I'm not no walking pastor, right? I'm just a regular guy. And I think that uh, it's a beautiful thing, right? It's a beautiful thing, your journey. You what, think that. You've no, been through the journey. No, no, no. I, I, what I'm trying to say is it's a beautiful thing that you've gone through all of these things and found a way to still be sitting here where you have a... Where I'm just an ex-NFL player that no one gives a fuck nah, about. Nah, nah, but that's the thing is, the, the thing is, and I realize... But is that's that, the truth. No, that's the, the truth. truth. The truth is you don't know who you can impact. Because you impacted, uh, you're because you're impacting impacted me. me right now. I know nothing about this. Uh, he knew nothing. We're learning. I'm to be really too. real, to be really real, Joe, I honestly see your side of it because I come from an angle where a, a dude, a whole hundred tried to kill me, and I and I and I survived it, and I felt the same way. Yo, everybody, nobody was there. I can't trust nobody. I felt the yo the same thing. Why, why why am I telling my story? to help other dudes not be in the street. I don't care about them. They need to learn and survive the same way I did. At that young age, I felt like I didn't want to live neither. Yo, man. My sister had AIDS. It was mad stuff going down. My, I lost my grandmother. Now a dude tried to kill me. I'm broke. So I felt like I'm trying to give up too. But at some point in time, I decided for my own self that I'm going to bring joy in my life. I'm not going to depend on if I have a friend. I'm alone. I tried to do that, too. I tried to retire but from yo, my job. It to took pursue. me time, but yo. <laughs> but, but, see, but it took me, but on, on some real <laughs> show, it took me time. I woke up every day, mm -hmm. every single day, from the soles of your feet to the top of your head, everything hurt. No one could see it. 
No one understood it. You couldn't show it to nobody. There was really no medicine that cured it. Mm -hmm. But every day, everything hurt. You knew going to sleep that you would wake up the next day and you would it feel would the same. hurt. Mm -hmm. I was three so left in a running car. No, no car seat, no... She was a gangster. I feel you. She was a gangster. She beat the shit out of me. But um, <laughs> you got to think about it as a kid, like when you're getting walked by your mom and you're like, mom, help, and your mom's just acting like you don't exist. And then you, you walk by your dad and it's like, dad, help, and your dad don't exist. Then you get stripped down and beat the shit for something that any three-year-old would have done, you don't fucking trust people. Mm -hmm. If you never developed that relationship with your parents, how are you supposed yeah. to develop it with other people? My grandma used to brag to my wife all the time, back when she was my girlfriend, used to brag to her. We used to take him away from his mama back when he was three and four. We'd be gone for months. He never asked for his mama. That's not fucking normal. Mm -hmm. My kids wake up from naps looking for my ass, like, and I ain't shit, but you know what I'm saying? Like, you are something, stop that. But you know what I'm saying? Though? Like these I are understand the, what you're saying. I'm saying that there are, I I'm not sitting here saying that like suicide is the answer. See, I also have went through a lot of like traumatic things, especially in my childhood. I said I was raising myself since I was eight, eight years old, right? And I'm a female. Mm. So it's a little bit different. I did not have my mother around at all. When I was eight, her and my dad got divorced. She skated, whatever. I stayed with him. I had my grandmother around, but it's still not the same mother figure and she did what she could my sisters and my brothers i have a brother he's older than me my sisters they're older than me but i still feel like i harbored those feelings growing up and maybe that's why i'm still always on the defense right mm. and, and initially it's always like because i had to protect myself and i'm a young girl in the streets like even though they were like oh me, my father worked at night right so nobody's really like monitoring us mm. my brother he's two years older than me i'm eight he's 10 my sister's 12 the other one's 14 they they still figuring out things because we're at adolescence or teenage years where you don't really know what the is going on when you don't have any structure but for me also I used to feel like I was so angry or I felt like my mother don't care like how could you leave she used to try to reach out but it's like you're not around you don't know if I'm getting raped out here at eight you're not around when I don't I caught my first period like I had to learn all these things on my own however I guess my way has always been to excel at things, right? So I always was in like academics programs where I'm in the honor. Like for me, competition, I, I mean, you're an athlete, but competitiveness or being popular just came natural because I was always trying to like fill that void. Mm -hmm. However, I did harbor those feelings where I was always angry, like everybody else loves me. Why does my, why my own family ain't here? Like my dad was emotionally unavailable. Mm -hmm. He was a worker. He went to work at night. Mm -hmm. You gonna do the best that you can cause you don't really know. Mm -hmm. But for me, it was, I can sympathize with you and maybe that's why I struck cause it's just like, damn, at least I was able to somehow project it in a way to where it helped me become stronger mm -hmm. And I it just made you more positive in some other ways. Yeah, 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 in a sense, all right. But I mean, I still have my foot. And again, I told him, it don't matter how old you are. You're constantly trying to grow, constantly trying to learn. It wasn't even up until I got to my twenties to where I was finally like, it's not for me. When my mom does reach out every couple of months, I'm not gonna be like, keep saying. It's like, why are you calling me? Because it used to make me angry when she would call. At the same token. You know, I've never went to therapy, and I probably should have went to therapy a long time ago. For me, though, in my household and being Dominican, we don't have money to even go to therapy, or that's just not some shit that you do mm -hmm. in a Spanish household. You better go talk to your friends, or you better figure it out. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So it, it did take a lot of self-reflecting in times when I was sad or angry or even feeling like, well, how do all these people love me? But my own, everything that makes me sad is about the home front because it really does stem from when you are a kid. That mm -hmm. is the traumatic shit that kind of shapes your personality towards growing up. But it came to a point where I was like, I have to take accountability for my own actions. It's not for me to be cursing out my mother. You know what? You you didn't understand the way. Like you, I'm not making excuses for you at all because as the parent, you're supposed to know better. And maybe that's why I still don't have kids, right? Because until I feel like I'm r really rich and able to give them everything or a stable home, I don't want to be a baby mama. 
I'm not saying these are right thoughts. I'm just once again yeah. telling y'all like this is I what feel. goes on in my head. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everybody's fucked up, including the parents, right? And then these parents that are fucked up have a child who is an innocent born baby and they put them through the chronicles. Mm -hmm. And they think because they put them through the Chronicles, they and the baby makes it out strong, or sometimes the baby doesn't make it out stronger. It the motivated. baby makes millions of dollars that all of that is superseded, and it's really not. So, I get what he's saying because sometimes for some people, pain lasts forever. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I am one of those people. This thing is all new. Mm -hmm. How many generations of parents do we really know? Okay, mm -hmm. so technology, we're all still learning. Mm -hmm. my, I'm my mother and father's only son. Mm -hmm. So although my mother had two girls, she had they had to learn how to deal with a son. I'm the only one. And before that, I have my grandmother and my great grandmother. How much time we ain't we ain't been in this civilization to know everything, mm -hmm. to be young. He's a young man, right? Mm -hmm. But he's in his 30s. So let's go back 30 years ago when he was three with autism. Did we know how to really deal with that in the community? Mm -hmm. Hell no. Mm -hmm. The same way we didn't learn. We're all still learning. And that's the point that I'll be like, people don't understand and they don't get. Yeah, financial literacy, that's not here for everybody. Some of us are still learning. We wasn't from JFK bootlegging mm -hmm. and with learning about stocks and bonds mm -hmm. in 1921 and passing that stuff down we're learning to be parents we're learning to be better there was a time when fathers left the home mm -hmm. now now the home. kids who fathers left the home are at home trying to be fathers mm -hmm. because they learn people didn't know so as we keep blaming everybody our world is evolving mm -hmm. that's why sometimes forgiveness although it's hard sometimes forgiveness is needed because we mm -hmm. just don't have they the knowledge. They didn't they have might have the looked answers. at an autistic son and not understood. This ain't what you think it is. This boy is gonna go on and do great things. Mm -hmm. Treat him greatly. But sometimes people, my parents that found out that a dude tried to kill me, they feel like that's a badge that's taken from them. I raised a son that somebody tried to kill. I'm the one that went through it. Mm -hmm. I'm the one that had to learn to walk again. I'm the one that didn't do nothing to deserve this. Mm -hmm. But they took that and said, I don't even want to talk about it because this is embarrassing for me mm -hmm. that somebody tried to kill my kid. They, was, they still learned it. I was pissed about that mm -hmm. for years, mm -hmm. okay? I was pissed about it to the point that when they, people talked about it and said, yo, he goes outside. He's not like people that... Survive the murder. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? I go outside. I'll go back in. I don't care. We go tell you, but I'm not scared of nothing. I don't care, right? <laughs> it, it 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 doesn't matter. But when people would mention and be like, "Yo, your son is tremendously strong. Like he survived that. Started walking again. And everything." My father will sit to this day. He'd be like, "What are you talking about?" And we'll look at him like. <laughs> Are you serious, bro? What you mean? What are we talking about here? Sorry. sorry. Yeah, so it's wow. a, so, and I'm just saying that our parents deal with things funny. A dude robbed me at gunpoint. Never been robbed before. My mother said, you think we don't know you out there selling drugs? Mm. I wasn't selling drugs. Mm. I was, I'm a college graduate with two degrees. I had been in the music business for over a decade by this time. But she still reverted to say, oh, well, if somebody tried to stick you up and rob you, it had to be something that you was doing because if it wasn't, then, that, then that's Ooh, a reflection no, upon me. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that that's all wrong. Right, all of it. That, all, every, everything that they said was all wrong, although that was my parents, they didn't know. They didn't know how to deal with a young dude that didn't want to work a nine to five, that used his brain. I'm not working hard. I'm working smarter. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm getting this money. Y'all, oh yeah, I'm traveling across the world. I'm going here, I'm going there. They didn't understand that. Oh, he gotta be selling drugs. No. I'm a college graduate that learned how to use my brain to get this cash. Mm -hmm. But they didn't understand that. So in your situation, we already know your parents didn't understand it, right? That's where the forgiveness in my mind could come in. Yeah, yeah but you don't need to be in my life for me to forgive you. I didn't say yeah, like I, I got to hit out on my parents or nothing like that. Like, <laughs> I didn't mean, say talk about them. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I let that go, but at the same time, like it happened. Yeah, you can't ignore the fact that it happened. I can't forget it. Okay. 
And like it just it is what it is. Like there's there is no like, oh I'm mad or nothing like that. But there is a part of me that's like, I know I would be mentally better off if I had better parents. I'd probably be more proud of the football thing if I had better parents. Mm. You know, there's a person that I used to watch when I was 21 years old named Wayne D- Wayne Dyer. And uh, like he was a, a, somebody back in the 50s and the 60s and 70s, I believe. And he was one of the biggest speakers at that point in time. And a little bit about his his story, um, him and his older brother had an alcoholic dad who would beat them and whatever, whatever. And eventually they watched his dad kill his mother and then kill himself. And so from that point on, they started going through all of these foster and, and you know, you know, bouncing from house to house. Um, essentially, he goes on to become a doctor. Essentially, he goes on to become one of the biggest speakers at that time. And one of the things that he said is, it's unfortunate, everything that has happened to me, but and I'm not saying this to change your mind. Mm. Um, I used everything I've ever went through and learned from it to create a positive outcome of it and to teach. And here I am talking to millions of people. And I found out that this is one of the things that just brings me joy. I'm not saying that's your solution. No, that's how I feel about comedy. And that's what I'm trying to say. Like, exactly. So find, like, use something. Do something from it to bring you joy. No, I do that. You know? But I mean, even then, like, y'all are both music artists. Or you, you, all three of y'all are familiar with music. Like, how much joy does it bring you when you think you made something that's a slapper? And you got like five <laughs> monthly listeners on Spotify. <laughs> it hurts. How fucking stupid <laughs> do you have to feel? I be looking at my Spotify like, no, I could have still been playing football for this. Yeah. Like, I got yeah. here putting my heart and soul on these beats, and it's like, uh, three is good. All right. I understand the vision. I get it, though. I get it. No, no, no. I understand it's a grind. Why do NFL, NBA, sport players, why do they go broke? And I think the stat is about 60 to 80% of them go broke after they retire. It's, it's scary how close the numbers <laughs> are to the statistics. Good ain't losing no yeah. money, so I don't... Cause you're talking about 60 to 80%. Yeah. 60 per, 80% of the dudes, like, I mean, if we're gonna be honest, wouldn't, wouldn't have sniffed college if it weren't for sports. We know that. Coaches say that all the time on the field. Like, you know, I've heard a coach say to a player, like verbatim, like, get your shit together, you're gonna be working back at McDonald's in Queens. You know what I'm saying? No disrespect to Queens. Well, that's where it was from. <laughs> that's where it was from. Um, Lord, ooh. <laughs> on the I told A I'd be having self control now. <laughs> my bad, but he really, he really was from Queens. Okay. I'm talking about him right oh, now. Oh, my bad. This, talking about this guy. For sure. I just come in peace, y'all. I just. <laughs> <laughs> he don't come in peace. <laughs> but I say that to say, like, you can't give that kind of person millions of dollars and expect him to do. The right thing. The right thing. You got people who, who are living paycheck to paycheck who are making like hundreds of thousands. You just don't hear about it because they're not athletes. Mm-hmm. But do you feel like most of the time that they they like went broke, the reasoning is because of women? No. Nah. Because I would say, oh I would say like goodness. a lot of it's the, length, the career length. Cause like even if you're talking about the sixty to eighty percent, like a lot of cast careers don't last past two or three years, and you can't really make no. What money. in the NFL? Or mm-hmm. okay. In the NFL, I don't know what the NBA's average is, but I'm sure it's not high. You know what I mean? Cause you hear about like the LeBron Jameses and stuff like that, but there's you know Phil Williams. I just made up that name, but there's a Phil Williams that got drafted that won't be playing next year. You know okay. what I'm saying? Okay. Mm-hmm. So I think that's part of it too. Like the career length is the career length is so short. I agree with what you're saying, and and you know what? I'll be honest. I never thought about that Mm-mm. entirely. To be honest with you, I Which never did either until I got there. It, and it's kind of obvious, right? Yeah. But then again, I also expect that same person to spend their money on what? We talking the sixty to eighty percent? Yeah. Or yes. Like, yes. You'd yes. be surprised how many of them like cats spend it on family. Year. Huh? Family. You'd be surprised how many of them cats spend on Because you think about it, you got a whole community Look behind you. When you make it, you so got everybody about. and their grandma calling you. It's not you all like, about the women. You owe us. But I but I know because I watch these men be simps. Now, some dudes are simps. I watch them. I know them. I talk to them. But oh, not everybody. I talk to them. But too. not everybody. I would say it's... I'm going to give it a it's 15, really 15% simping. Out of, okay. out of the 80? Out of the 80. 15? I would say 15. Because you got to remember this, too. And this is something the NFLPA told us. You got a lot of cats who retired with a lot of money, but they had to get surgery. 
and they didn't have insurance, so they had to pay for that out of their pocket, mm -hmm. and that's how they went broke. Wait, if they get injured during the job, the NFL, the NBA, so we, supposed to pay for that. We were talking about people before, like the new, uh, I don't know what it is for the, I think it's the same for the NBA, collective bargaining agreement? Yeah, huh? Yeah, so before that new collective bargaining agreement, like them cats didn't get insurance when they were done playing. Look, I made $50 million and I spent $10 million on experiences. I'm going to say this. But that's not the dudes even... that's tricking on women ain't the ones going broke. There's <laughs> many variables on like how that. any person that's making money can go broke, right? Mm -hmm. But the ball player has more spotlight on them, whether they're a big ball player or a small one. Mm -hmm. The world doesn't know the small ones, but like you said, the town does. Mm -hmm. The family does. Mm -hmm. The friends do. So we got to realize it's, 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 it's the same thing upon anybody that makes it out. If you're a rapper, singer, whatever, there are people that are pulling on you. Mm -hmm. You have to have the right advisors with you mm -hmm. to keep your money, mm -hmm. right? But now, even with that, being that you might say some of them are not smart or whatever, it becomes a guidance thing. For sure. Who do you trust? Like you said, who's in your circle? Who in your circle can point you to somebody that you can trust? Now, that's not guaranteed, but people don't take time to seek out these things neither. You get the money, you say you're going to do what you want to do, and there's a lot of people that are not smart that think they're smart now because they have money. Yeah. They think, yo, I've that's conquered don't now. Say that again. And I got money. Mm -hmm. But they don't realize that you got to still defer to people. Mm -hmm. Now, as many things as I feel like that I know, when I talk about the relationship talk, I spend a lot of time on the phone with you. Before I do my shows, I spend a lot of time on the phone with Heineken because I need to know what I'm dealing with before I get there. I mm -hmm. like to be informed. Mm -hmm. So they can, they can accomplish things and not lose a lot by trying to learn to be informed. But as kids, we don't want to sit down and do that. We try to just figure that out. And that, and that, to me, is the biggest thing upon why they will lose their money eventually. One of them. Let's dive a step deeper, right? Because out of the same amount of people that go to these professionals, that become a professional athlete, we have about 70 to 80 percent that get divorced, okay. right? Mm -hmm. 70 to 80 percent of them get divorced. So I'm, before I even speak my opinion, because you've actually been in that room, in that light. There's a lot of people married that shouldn't be married. Okay. And then, I mean, not even just in sports. I'm talking about in life in general. A lot of people who marry shouldn't be married. That's... Yeah. But why do you think that they get married? Is it a safety thing? Do they have people there that want to watch their money? It's a trust thing. They're lonely. Why do they go and yeah, get married? a lot of cats. I mean, you talk about, like, what it takes to make a professional athlete. And let's just talk about the black ones. Not mm -hmm. many of them come from the suburbs, if any. I don't really know any. Yeah. Um, you coming from different traumatic situations and things you've had to deal with your whole life. The same thing that these rappers rap about. You just started playing sports. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's a lot of trauma. That's a lot of things that are weighing on you mentally. Like, some of these cats were abandoned by their parents and they just don't want to be alone. Mm -hmm. Some of these cats never felt like they were good enough for their mom. So they wanted to date somebody that made them feel worthwhile. Even with the divorce rate, you're trying to say like that is that's the casualty that results in why most of them go broke. So say that I get married with somebody and for whatever length time, if there's no prenup or whatever the situation is, and I somehow get half of your money or the judge issues this, we have kids, we have that. First of all, that should be according to your, your net worth or how much you're making. They might give her alimony, they might give her child support or whatever, whatever she might get. But it's contingent upon what your value is. So even if the judge wants to give me half of what you have, that means you're, how, how, how does that like correlate with you being broke? A lot, them, easy. A lot of them divorces don't happen to the money gone. Wait, come on, come on, e easy, oh. look, look, look. I'm with you, Yeah. all right, I'm Did pissed. you hear us what he said? What you say, a lot of those divorces don't happen to the money's gone. Cool, so that means people are eating it away. So it's gone. I was about to say, like, <laughs> like I'm with you and I'm paying for everything because I'm the breadwinner. I'm the ball player, right? So everything, you're not paying for not one thing. So everything now is getting paid for. Your hair that you say costs a lot of money, your nails, <laughs> your, your clothes, the travel, the house, the cars, the kids, the family. Your family is going to need shit, too. 
all right? And you're my wife. That's your family. That's my family. Mm -hmm. All this stuff is taken, and then you get up and say, you know what? I'm out, and I'm taking half of the rest of what you got. Now, I still have this, this house that I'm still paying mortgage on. Yep. I still got all this other stuff that I'm paying on, and it's contingent of my whole pie. Now you take half of my pie, and I still got to pay this whole thing. Equals broke. Easy. <laughs> you taking half of what I have, and, and my whole life is dependent upon of all everything that yeah. I have. Now I'm broke. What do y'all think about prenups? I think they're Prenup? good depending upon yeah. when you meet the woman. Yeah. You, know, you know what I'm yeah. saying? If you meet the woman and you don't have nothing, how are you going to have a prenup on nothing? That's real. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But if I have something, then yeah. Like, if you really love me, how I look at it, if you really love me, what does the prenup matter? It's, it's protecting me, and you know where I'm at. You know I'm a ball player. You know I'm in the spotlight, and you know people are coming at me always. So if I'm telling you to sign up a, a, a prenup, why would you get offended? You should already be in, in my state of mind if you're in tune with who I am and sign a paper because I'm taking care of you. And prenup divorce rates are pretty high. I'm really not opposed to prenup at all because I get it, right? If you have assets, especially depending upon the time that you actually meet a female, right? Mm -hmm. You already might be in a league. You already acquired your million. She's doing what she's doing. And you love her. You guys want to get married. I'm, I think I think a prenup is smart, actually, okay. right? So I'm not opposed to that. I actually wouldn't even feel offended, but also probably because I feel like I'm my own boss. As I'm trying to acquire these millions, I ain't reached millionaire status yet, but I also feel like I need to have a prenup set in place. So when you're in a position of power and you're in a position of wealth, I don't see anything wrong with that, right? Because okay. you're saying protect your assets. Mm -hmm. But do you think it would be fair for your wife and the woman that you love that if in the prenup there's a clause mm -hmm. that if you cheat on me during this marriage, then the prenup is null and void? No. Why would I do that? That makes no sense. Because you know what? Now, so because I cheated, now you get half of my stuff? No. What you mean? Because you no. should not be cheating on your wife in the yo, first yo, place. Yo, yo, yo. Talking about prenups earlier, I feel like if you need to get a prenup, you don't need to get married. Y'all don't trust each other. Somebody don't trust somebody. That's how I feel. I've seen it. I've seen enough of them. Uh -huh. And it's like, if you need to get a prenup, y'all need to get married. And that's fine. Um, When it comes to like the household thing, y'all know that show Everybody Hates Chris? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just told my wife, like, this is back when we were dating, well, I ain't trying to be married to no Rochelle. Like, who's just at home all the time, spending all the money, going crazy, yeah, that yeah. kind of thing. So, no, it's not like, you know, my wife is playing professional sports, too, but, I mean, we work together. You know, like, I'm, I'm a big believer in teamwork making the dream work. Yeah. And the reality is, like, nobody can do everything alone. Women don't believe in teamwork make the dream work. I'm not, I'm not even opposed my to that, My wife believes though. in that. No, 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 we're not talking. <laughs> Listen, when we this talk one, here... Okay. We're, we're, no, no, that's fine, but I gotta go home. We're talking about majority. Yeah, yeah. we're not talking about specifically the women that we're with. We're talking yeah. about majority. Okay. They in this day and age of when, of when we talk on this camera, the women do not believe in teamwork. No, they don't. And we have and we have mentioned it to them. What about a partnership? I feel like what about perpetuates that. What about bringing what you have, your skills, mm -hmm. to the table for me and help me be successful and let's work as a team like a puzzle They're, piece yeah they are not believers of that yeah. so what but you're, you're saying that and i'm a female and i'm a firm believer in that you're gonna you're gonna say that and you make two hundred thousand then in the household we have four hundred make the two hundred thousand first and let me see you spend it because I see so many people saying when I'm going to make it and what they're going to do with it. And when it comes time to spend it, they're <laughs> they not spending spend it. the cash. Yep. They're looking at the husband and say, hey, like you just said, aren't you the provider? The breadwinner. Aren't you the breadwinner? I cannot dis like, like, I like, can't disagree with yo, that's, that. Yeah, that's real I, talk. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, we talk about this I've all the time. That. They yeah. go make the money. This We just talked about this on, on a segment that yeah. they want to be bosses. and But bosses... Take care of everybody. Everyone. These yeah. boss women are not taking care oh of everybody. They money, they money is in their pocket, and they looking for another man that's a boss to take care of them, and they can pocket their money and spend it what they want to spend it on. Right. Like even if you were making two hundred thousand and he was making a hundred thousand, exactly. you're not spending your two hundred. I'm she paying. Expect you to pay. Thank you, bro. That's all I'm saying. Only if you got a wife or you about to be with somebody and they definitely know it, then they're gonna. In regards to relationships and marriage. No, 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 no. Relationships. 
and about to be a wife is two totally different things. You can have mad relationships. I'm not planning to marry you. I'm not planning to be with you. You don't want to be with me. I think you're trash, and I'm trying to get my way out of the situation. Maybe not trash. Y'all got together. (laughs) But you might have found out she's trash now. Come on. Don't act like you ain't never met a woman, and you dealt with her, and you said, yo, she's trash. She's trash. She's trash. (laughs) But the box is good. (laughs) So I take her out to eat because I'm a millionaire. Don't put the camera on him because he's married, and he got to go home. I gotta go home. I'm that. married too, and I'm going home. But I tell you what, <laughs> you are right. No. When I, look, I, I tell you when you're right. You're right. Like I have been in them relationships where you just wake up and look at yourself in the mirror, like, what you doing? Bro? Thank you. <laughs> Yo, bro, what are we doing? Bro, thank you. What are no? What are we? What doing? are we doing? Exactly. Why are we talking to ourselves? Now <laughs> they can hear us. Like, <laughs> what are we what doing? What are we doing? I think you're missing the core value of that when you do get married with somebody. You're marrying them because you love them, right? You trust them. Even if you do feel like you have to put a prenum in place because you do have assets, this is somebody that makes you happy. This is somebody that you love. This is somebody that you want to build a foundation with. That you trust. Right, that you trust, that you want to build a foundation with. Otherwise, why the why the hell are you marrying her, right? The core value though is is for is the, the foundation of marriage is for between you and one other person. So when I got into the, the topic of, well, would you be okay with there being a clause that if I cheat on you, then fuck it, the prenup is null and void. And you're like, fuck that, why? So that already means that you have no intention of fulfilling the vows that you done said at marriage. What I'm going to say first is that a lot of people get married, right? And especially when you're talking about somebody who is at a million dollar plus status, right? And then- So were you referring, I'm sorry to cut yeah. you off, were you referring to sports too, when you were talking I'm about that? I'm referring to sports. Just people with money. Yeah, yeah. Money, okay. somebody with money. Money, it's yeah. like they're okay. companions most yeah. of the time. No, 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 I get it. I was just trying to yeah. make sure yeah. the context. Right, but, but, but the thing is, I feel like a lot of times, women are companions under certain conditions. Like, he said this before, he said women, a lot of these divorces happen once the money is gone, right? Uh, th- he was speaking from a professional athletic side. I'm also seeing that too. Once the money is gone or once the hardships come, a lot of these marriage, a lot of these divorces are filed by women. This is a fact. More marriages are filed by, I mean, divorces are filed by women than it are by men. Mm-hmm. So when you take all of these, th- you take yeah. it's eighty percent of divorces. I it was oh, 67. damn! I thought it's, it was sixty-seven. It's high. So oh, it's sixty-seven. Because high. the money's gone. Wait, hold on. No, 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 no. Rate, it doesn't. He, he, he was just I'm using. He was just using the stats to build. Yeah. The yeah. There's more than one reason. Maybe the guy might treat her bad. Yeah. Maybe he might have cheated on her. Yeah. I'm, People change. There, there are a lot of reasons why divorces are filed, but majority of the divorces are filed by women. Right. And from a athletic standpoint of somebody who's been there, he said, I didn't make this up, but I'm going to use it because I, I agree with it. A lot of the divorces happen when the money's gone. So that leads me back to what I was saying was women marry with conditions a lot of times. But men do, too. I mean, men do, too. But I'm talking about financial, materialistic conditions. I mean, yeah. I don't think men marry for, for, for financial conditions. Not financial, but the material. Or material, or material conditions either. So if you marry a woman and you like, hey, you can't put on a certain amount of weight, what would you consider that? I call that health. Because at the end of the day, when we say we're going to have a lifetime together, I got to trust that you are putting yourself in the best healthy yeah. position <laughs> to be for that whole time. That health work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when it's all Mental said Mental health, that, physical health. That's all health. health. That's not the leading factor because when a woman really, really loves a man, she gonna do whatever to try to see him win. And if I'm marrying somebody, it's really gonna be based, I mean, of course, there's women who marry for money, but I'm saying if we're looking at it in a perfect world, do you, are you trying to say that yes. it really resulted because the money's gone or maybe she's sick and tired of dealing with the bullshit that comes with marrying I, a fucking I, 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 Honestly, it's a combination of the two. When we say things about women, it's a problem. You're taking it personal, as no. if at, as if we're talking about you, right? So when we're talking about the women that men are encountering, you are one person. You are not the 67 or the 79 percent that we're talking about that are divorcing these men that they have, right? When they have these men that are rich, if this divorce rate is so high, 
You think that they're only divorcing these men because of cheating and what the men is doing? That's my question for you because okay. that's how you're making it seem well, to me. Well, honestly, the thing is the divorce rate is high regardless of the pedigree. So I feel like when you say that, the divorce rate is the same level even amongst people that are not rich. So what do you mean? In these locker rooms, mm. how many of them got caught cheating on, got caught cheating by their girl, but their girl still stayed? If you had to give a general person, a general percentage. <laughs> from the shit that I've heard though, and like from what people say, and you said the woman stayed? They how many, stayed, How yeah. many times cheated? Any you cheated, you cheated, you cheated, right? Yeah, yeah, at least once. Did they just leave? A good 50%. A good 50 to 60%. And then when you put a kid in there, then it's, it's way different. It gets a little different, yeah. yeah. But, but so, so is it fair to say this? Is it fair to say this, right? If a woman has a man who has all these options and he, 50% of these men have explored these options, but they stayed and got married, and then they go ahead and become themselves again in this marriage, is that a means for them to just say, I'm done? Yeah. Because <laughs> that's not what you're... Shit. That's not what we're talking about marriage vows. Yeah, and that's like, what not is what you, we signed up for. Yeah, like, that's not what you said in front I'm of the preacher. <laughs> I can't... I got to interview you, but I'm going to drink because you just stressed me out. You okay, guided no, me, right. and then you got, you left me. You abandoned me. I will me. tell you this. Like, my wife and I don't have a prenup. But I wasn't making big money before we got married. I mean, I, okay, I was still in the NFL, but I didn't start making millions till after we got <laughs> married. And if I'm being 100% honest with you... You were in the NFL, bro. <laughs> like, if it wasn't for her, I don't know if I'd have got there. Like, and okay. I, I keep that in my mind, too. This like, if it wasn't for her, I don't know if I'd have got there. In what way? Mentally? Mentally, emotionally, like, I mean... When you at a, when you work a job where you constantly getting criticized, people talking shit on social media, you know how that shit goes. Like you need somebody to tell you like, don't kill yourself. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I know that got real serious, but you know what I'm saying. Like, I know what you mean. Somebody to tell That's you like system. your dreams are valid. You know what I mean? Like I, I'll say this. Like even right now, like you know, I, obviously I'm a former NFL player. That shit makes my spleen itch. Because I do comedy. I didn't quit football to be a former NFL player. I quit football to do music and comedy. Mm -hmm. Even now, my wife is like, you know, that will be the case one day. Like, encouragement. You know, those kinds of things. Um, so I would say she's like a big part of my success. But, but may I ask you one, one question about what you said? Yeah. What is the big deal that makes your spine go that way when somebody asks you if you're an ex-football player? Because, let me just say this, because... In this world, that's a that's a badge that people are trying to attain. It's a yeah. it's a trophy. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing. So when somebody's saying that to you, when they're saying that you're this ex player, yeah, well, they're they're, they're saying you went through the trenches, you did your thing, you got drafted, and no matter why you're not there, it doesn't matter whether you got hurt, quit, or walked away. It's a positive badge in this world. Why are you looking at it like it's negative and you don't like it? Because it's not who I am. Like, when people hear NFL player or ex-NFL player, you think of a certain type of person. And it's just, it's not who I am. And like, I, what I hear when people say ex-NFL player, in my mind, I hear like, your best days are behind you. Mm. You know what I mean? And I don't, I know that my best days aren't behind me, but that's what I hear when I hear ex NFL players. Like, we only give a fuck because you used to play football, but don't nobody even know who I am on the football. Like, I was an offensive lineman, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So, for me, and I mean, you know, you got grandparents and relatives that fought in the civil rights movement to, you know, give our people a chance to be more than entertainers, and I become an entertainer. I feel like I sold out to my ancestors like I do think that sometimes my ancestors are like what the fuck do we do all that protesting for like what what do we you know what I mean so like, you could get on so you could get on the field and make, make the money happen. that the other people wasn't making mm -hmm. and no, I, I, I can see how you could spin it and see and, and see where you're coming from but from a person that's not a that's not a player that was a basketball player who would I would love for somebody to say I'm an ex NBA, NBA yeah. player that would be like yeah that's me 
But that's because it sounds, because it sounds to me, what it sounds to me like, see, it sounds to you different. To yeah. me, it sounds like success. Yes, yeah, it me. sounds like that you were successful in one part of your life already, and now you're going to another part of your life to continue being successful. Maybe that football thing was just your a stepping chapter. stone, yes. yeah, and 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 a chapter. But you're kind of looking at it like, yeah, I did this, but it didn't all work out for me positively, so I don't want to be known as that. But that's but what you're shunning away to me. It's an accomplishment. It's a, it's, it's a it's a bit. Yeah. You had to work hard. You had to get there. But you, it's hard. I uh -huh. say this. It's hard. And I don't know if this explanation helps. It's hard being a black man in a Louis Vuitton store and somebody comes up to you and asks, like, what position do you play? Because mm. they just assume that that's the only way you can be there. I feel you. It's really hard to be sitting first class in a plane <laughs> and everybody turning around trying to get an autograph because you got to be famous to be here. Like, what do you yeah. do? You, Gosh, you yeah. can't just be a doctor or... A, Yo, I feel you, you know 100%, bro. Like, and that, honestly, like, that, that, that shit irks me. Like, it does, and it... I know that sometimes like I will put my insecurities on other people when they say that, but like that shit hurts my feelings. Like it does. Yeah. And I take it as like, you know, after what I just explained to you, like, I mean that shit happens a lot. Like that shit happens a lot. Yeah. Especially I live in Texas. Yeah. Motherfuckers coming it's a sports up. Sports town. Yeah, yeah. We I mean, we at church. Hey Hoss, what position do you play? You know, I'm not just trying to be here with my kids and my family. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like and why do you assume that all I could do to be here is play football? For me, it was never it was never the dream. And I know that's weird to say because it's so many other people's dream. It was never my dream. Like, and it was never people that fueled me saying I wasn't going to get there that got me there. It was just me wanting to be better. You know what I mean? I'm going to tell you something funny about myself. This wasn't my dream. Okay. I, my dream was to be in the music business. I wanted to have my own record label. I wanted to be known as the best manager. I wanted to be bigger than Puff Daddy and Dr. Dre, all types of wild stuff, right? Accomplished many things, not those, you know what I'm saying? Accomplished many things, made tons of money, got tons of relationships, and then was still like, if I would have known that this music was like it was, I wouldn't have did this like I did it. That's real. Right? So then I started making my money off the music still, but not really into it, not loving it. Mm -hmm. the Heineken comes along. He brings this podcasting thing to me. It works out. And this became what I love, digital creation. I love digital creation just as much as I love basketball. And if anybody knows, knows me, basketball is my first ultimate love. That's what I do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But digital content creation for me is what comedy and music is for you. I so when, I, when we first started out, I was like, I don't get where he coming from and all that. And yeah. I'm going to be real, when people, not when they call me a manager, but when they see all these great strides that I'm making and the money that I'm making and the progress that I'm making, it gets on my last nerves when they say, will you manage me? I'd be like, don't you see everything that I'm doing? That's real. How do you think I'm going to be in movies and do all these platforms and I got time to manage you? I take that yeah. but you gotta look as offense. I, okay, I, I'm not telling you how to take it, but that's really a compliment. Okay. Yeah. I, I say the same thing about you. Mm -hmm. You right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, hey, and we both in the same. <laughs> you go. Yeah. I say the same thing about right. you, that's and that, and that's why I said it because it paralleled yeah. how how you felt. Yeah. And getting to know you for this next amount of time, I said, "Oh, dude, it's cool." Now I see why he feels that way. You know what and I'm I saying? I will acknowledge that as a compliment moving forward. I got you. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get hit with it another 15 times before I leave the city. Definitely. Yeah, <laughs> facts. <laughs> Definitely. We can use you for the Giants. Shut the fuck up, Karen. <laughs> hey, that, wait, wait, talk about. <laughs> Definitely we could use you for the Giants. See what I'm saying? <laughs> That's my team. That's my team. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> That's my team. I really do want to know what you personally feel like defines you as a man. What is your role and what what do you feel like makes you a man to where, you know, you're not a little boy. I'm a man. This is the values or the morals that I stand on. Can I get an answer from um, S.O. first? Oh, choose me. Yeah, right. yeah, S.O. What makes you a whole man? Like, you be very thoughtful and introspective. Please. First of all, my mind state is totally different from people, right? I'm inherently a provider and a protector. 
not just over of my wife, of my friends, of my loved ones, right? I have standards that I don't waver from. I'm a family man. I love my family to death. I'll ride and I'll die for my family. What makes me the man that I am, I'm always willing to sacrifice. I put everybody in front of me. And then, I, then because I got God there, God has blessed me with all the things that I have given away or even sacrificed. So in my life, seeing my father do that and seeing my mother sacrifice, I knew that I had to be a responsible person. I had to be a caring person and I had to be a family man if I was going to be fulfilled in my life. And that's what I designed what a man was to be for me. I don't know. Do what you ever do be. anything for yourself? Like, I know you're talking about sacrificing, but like, you ever take care of yourself at all? Right now. I take, I mean, <laughs> what I'm talking about, like, pertaining you know, to what? Give me a, a like, quick example. Uh, some of the things that you sacrifice. Like, do you ever do any of those things? Yeah, hell yeah. All right. Yeah. Sure. I, I, you make sure I, you I have going, your youth no, time. I, I get my, I, sure. I get my thing off. Because yeah. I just didn't want you to have no resentment. You no, know, no, I get my thing off, but I'm, com there is no resentment because I'm comfortable with. Well, and because you're doing your you know, business. I, I like being, when we walk in places, I'm in the back. I'm right. cool with people just doing their thing. I, I get my natural shine. I'm fine. No, 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 no. I'm mm -hmm. not talking about attention. I'm talking about, like you were talking about sacrificing. Like, let's yeah, say. Now, when I say my shine, whatever it is oh, that I want. Oh, whatever it is. Gotcha. I get whatever it is that I want. I can't say in this world right now, there's something that I want that I don't have. Respect. You know what I'm saying? But, so, but I'm saying, so you feel like, though, a man or what makes a man is responsibility responsibility sacrificing mm -hmm. caring for his family providing sounds like mm -hmm. service too so why is it that mm -hmm. when we because as we were speaking mm -hmm. in regards to marriage though why does it seem like that you guys are always so opposed to if a woman feels like she's supposed to be protected and provided for that it's such a is crazy that, thing is that my question yeah, that's for um, no. Okay, so, I'll, I'll let yeah. them answer. Go ahead. You can answer because I got a whole different thing. Yeah, I'm... yeah. because they are not <laughs> looking to reciprocate that. You hold on to that See, one. See, <laughs> I'm looking to get that, yeah. but I'm all I'm reciprocating that at all times. These women that we're looking at or that we're talking about, because. I'm gonna be like him. I'm not talking about my wife. My there wife is very giving. I'm not gonna cap. We might argue about a lot of stuff. What's your wife's name? Soraya. 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 Hey, Soraya, you got a good one. Yeah. She is. <laughs> listen. Shout out to Soraya. Yeah, yeah. She is a giving person. So we will fight about things. But the reason why we have stayed together is because she is giving just like me. Mm -hmm. And I realized that. I know, There's a reciprocity. I, I, I didn't realize I've come across, because I'm going to talk to myself, I'm going to talk about myself. Yeah. I've come across women and people yeah. who are not like that. So when, it, when I feel like that you're a man, if Rico has his daughter in his house and he's not sacrificing and he's not putting her first and he's not teaching her about standards and all that, I'm going to say, yo, Rico, you're not a man, bro. What yeah, is you doing? You in being your being a good friend, too, because a lot just talk shit behind Rico back and never say nothing to him. Yeah, yeah no, no, we Shout nah. out to you for being we, a good friend. We, 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 we don't do that. About this on the last sure. segment. Yeah. yeah, so so those are the things for me. But do you even feel like right, even with your wife and you mm -hmm. guys have reached this level, mm -hmm. right? Initially, I'm sure that when you met your wife, you provided a safe haven for her to even feel comfortable enough to want to be giving. <sighs> Even if that's in her character, right? Because I'm a naturally given person. But if I'm entertaining somebody and he makes me feel unsafe, then why am I gonna go all out and be all and, and be all out? So it's like, are you picking and choosing when you decide that you wanna give this like openness to somebody? Because Not for you for you to make it to that point with your wife and you're like, she's very giving and mm -hmm. I see that. Or if rip were you just like, let me give so that I could receive. I always give. That's me. So I'm not giving to receive. If I give you and you don't reciprocate, then I know that we're not on the same level. I don't fret what I gave anybody. Mm -hmm. That's right. See, there are people that I'm fret. Even talking like emotion wise or no, like no, no, vulnerability. I'm just, no, yeah. vulnerability, whether I gave you my heart, I'm not fretting because who I am as this Sagittarius man, yeah. I put my stuff out on the floor. Meaning that. I can put my heart out there because I've had great 
relationships with women. Mm -hmm. So it's worked out for me. Yeah. But there are other men, it hasn't worked out for them. Right. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> but even with those men, <laughs> with those men, I'm how I look now, at it like you know. it just wasn't meant to be. Okay. And that's how I, I deal with it. Like, yo, that wasn't meant to be. I'm going to just move on. Honestly, it's your loss. Would you consider yourself a mentally healthy person? Yeah, I do. That's like a sorry. Well, I, I'm only the laughing because you smell it. The reason I ask is because like question. these responses that you have. I mean, I meet with a therapist twice. Uh huh. And these responses that you have, like, I hope to one day be at a fraction of like the way that you're talking you. right now, because this sounds very healthy in a good way. Because me so and my I, man talk all day. That's real. And I talk to him and I say there are certain things that doesn't even get into my world because I because I honestly Football. I don't care. I care about the people who care about me. Yeah. And my circle stays very small. This dude is the only person to get in my circle since Heineken. Oh, and, so like recently. And I met Heineken yeah. six years ago. Respect. And he's the yeah. only person that's in my world from six years ago. And he's the only person that's in my daily world from a year and a half, Watch half yourself. ago. Watch yourself. No, I'm just playing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I don't deal with people because I throw my heart out there. Yeah, like, yeah. that's that's just what I am. Mm. So I can't have a whole bunch of people because they're going to take it and they're going to run with it. You're going to be depleted. Yeah, I, I would just, walk away like, what did yes. I do? Mm. But I used to. I that's wasn't always real. this person. That's real. I wasn't always this person. Like, it, it took me time to get there. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, you good. But so what do you? Because Rico said he had a completely different answer than you. No, no, no. No, he was talking about he had another subject. So. No, 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 not subject. Oh. Like another um, response. Yeah, response. I mean, I agree with. Um, back to the topic or the question was, um, what do we believe makes a man a man, right? Yeah. And I believe um, very similar to everything that he was saying. You know, providing. I posted something on my Instagram, and um, basically it said. A woman can't tell a man how to be a man. Mm -hmm. I see that. And when it's all said and done, men recognize men, mm -hmm. right? And a man is recognized when he becomes of use to his tribe or family, mm. right? So for with that being said, what that means to me, yes, providing, um, and why sometimes providing, I, and I said this on Aid at the Table before on one of our biggest um, videos of what you bring to the table because I said there is many ways that a man provides mm -hmm. and we try to shun all of these ways and just try to push the one financial narrative mm -hmm. and I don't like that me personally I'm different like I've known my wife since like the fifth grade we didn't start dating until like near the end of college but communication I think has been the key like just and I know it sounds super simple but just telling each other how we feel about stuff, mm -hmm. about things that have happened, about things that are gonna happen, like things that normal, not normal, but things that most married people don't talk about. I think that's why the divorce rate is so high because people can't communicate. And if you can't communicate, you can't be a team. Like you were talking about a partnership, yeah. it's gonna fail. Yeah. So I would say communication, uh, honesty, um, yeah, and God. I mean, we're both Christians. You mm -hmm. value your vows, correct? Yeah. So it's also worked because you're not out here cheating on your wife. Yeah. <laughs> Why does every woman always say that act like cheating is the only way? I'm j I just don't understand. It's a betrayal. I just don't understand. Is that all we're doing is cheating? Let me keep it real with you. A female, and, and I've said this previously on, on the different podcasts, Yes, there are some women out here that are sometimes like, oh, I'm a savage, I don't want nobody, I, I want to deal with this, this, and that, man. But she must be, something must have triggered her that she's hurt or she's went through her traumatic experiences. And these are defensive that ha defenses that have been built up for her to cope with whatever her reality is. But naturally, I'm speaking as a female, I'm sure any wife, any wife that you have, any girlfriend that you may have, every female at the end of the day, 
We want, when we love, we want to be loved. We want one person. We want that partnership. The same way that you saying a man is also chasing that, it's even rare for a woman to obtain that because we outnumber you by so many, mm -hmm. right? So at the same token, if we do find somebody that we love, yes, there's other things that might annoy me. You might not be as emotionally available and I'm, I'm somebody that likes to communicate, but you don't like to speak about your feelings. I'm a Sag, we put it all out there. Somebody that's a cancer, a cancer man, he, you know what, he's mo emotionally unavailable. And I'm only speaking on cancer because my father's a my cancer. My father's a cancer. My father's a cancer. That's my weird. brother's a cancer. My three nephews are cancers. And yes, I've found ways because I've dealt with my dad alone to even figure out how to tap in with my nephews who are younger than me because obviously I'm smart, I'm gonna figure it out. I know, I know what you're already experiencing. And I don't wanna say astrology is the end all be all, but I'm saying there's certain characteristics that certain people do possess. So as a Sag, and I'm just out there, if you might be restricted from giving me that, that's frustrating. That's something that might make me feel like you don't trust me enough or you're not into me enough. I bring up the cheating though, because yes, that is something that is detrimental to most women because it's easier for us when we love a man and we don't have eyes for nobody. If I really lock in and I like somebody, I don't have eyes for anybody else. I don't have eyes for anybody else. So it's like, I don't even care if Bill Gates is trying to talk to me and I'm in love with somebody. You giving Bill well, some Bill play. Bill Gates ain't hot. What? You giving Bill no, some play. crazy. You yeah. giving Bill some play. Even when I was blindly in love with my ex or whoever ex is, I've had opportunities with people that have had so much more millions than him. I've had people that had so much more notoriety than them try to holler at me and I did not give a fuck because I was in love with him. Go ahead. Could you acknowledge that? That you're in the minority. I don't think it's about me being in the minority because, like I said, innately, every female, that's what they really chasing. That's what they really desiring. For one dude to really rock with them, for one dude to value them and respect them. Sometimes, a lot of the females, though, they're just not even intellectual or conscious enough to even be able to decipher what it is that they want or what, how, like how to even think or go about it. So they might put up that defense. Even though I'm saying I've had failed relationships, my relationships were, they they were in moments of longevity, right? So every every person that I'm interacting with has not gotten it. I could easily go out with somebody and not sleep with them. I could easily have conversation with somebody but not be in the house cooking and cleaning for them. So I feel like women that might do that to everybody that she comes in counsel with because she might be pursuing love or she's she wants to show her worth. Or that's how she was raised. I'm about to say she could be caring. No, but I'm I'm very look. I'm no, saying, no, no, I'm I know. I look, the thing is, I'm only that. I'm only. It's not that I'm speaking about myself personally, but I am. I have to revert it back to my own experiences as a female and the females that I've been around. All the relationships that you had, mm -hmm. right? Serious relationships. Yeah. How many of those? What percentage? I don't want to say the number of relationships. What percentage of those relationships, out of all your relationships? Do you deem them to be a good husband today, potentially? Are you in touch with them to know? I'm in touch. I'm in okay. touch. I think that um, you also have to look at time difference, right? Like time or age or what, right? What, so I feel like in my in my entirety, honestly, I've had two mm -hmm. in my adulthood okay. real live relationships, but okay. they were also long, right? So yeah. my first relationship. I might not like the way that I view it now. Obviously, the things that I'm I know and the things that I'm right chasing, now. Yeah, are You're they reassessing? I, the are thing they... is, I would say one okay. I, out of the two. I would say one, but okay. no. But I would say though, honestly, okay. it's hard to say that because with as many great attributes that he had, he also had. But, Bad but you attribute. know what I want to, this is what I'm trying no to say, right? No, 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 and I know, but, but it's kind of... But Mia, listen, right? This is what I'm trying to say. Because we're talking about giving yourself to people, right? Mm -hmm. And you're giving more to these people or you're giving the same to all these people. And when we were talking about that, I'm thinking like all the relationships that I've had, yeah. serious, I would say three. Yeah. 
I think they're all wives. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. one of them is a wife, mm -hmm. as of right now. Mm -hmm. Actually, nah, I think two of them are. Damn, to, that's to be too honest. real. I don't think mm -hmm. any of my right? married. So, <laughs> so but, but this is what I'm trying to say, right? And this is what I'm trying to say. At some point in time, you have to come to grips. Are you choosing wrong? But do you? Or, or, because or, I believe I was the was problem. Right. I was, I was choosing right. Exactly. I was the problem. You was making exactly. the wrong decision. I was making the wrong decision right. when exactly. I chose. So if I'm choosing the wrong ones over and over again, or ones that are not meeting what I deem to be a wife, or what you may deem, or somebody, or another woman, as a husband. or whomever may deem as a husband. Mm -hmm. They have to do some self-reflecting. Yeah. Every single one of my exes, I don't care how long it's been, whatever his status is, whether he was not a millionaire, whether he was a millionaire, has always came back around because I've been a good person to him. I've been a good girlfriend to them. I've been somebody that exudes those characteristics. Granted, it's not even like, well, if you did all that, then why would he cheat? Like, you're in a position where you have options, you're young, Right? I'm just saying, because that was a lot of the reasons why my relationships ultimately ended. That's real. Right? Even when he wasn't doing what he was supposed to, or even if, you know, I felt like he was lagging on certain things that I wanted, like open communication or the ability to, like, you know, just certain things. I didn't feel like it wasn't something that I wouldn't try to work through because I loved him. The cheating thing really was the ultimate betrayal. So that's why I constantly have brought it up because that's what that's the reason why I'm not with any of them. It's not really because they walked away from me and they didn't want to deal with me anymore. It would be that we'll break up, you come back around, we'll make up, and then you'll break up and we'll make up. But it was never a matter of do you see me as a wife or not? And this goes back to, and this is why I was trying to answer your question because you're saying all your exes, you feel like they either are a wife or you felt like they are a wife, but it was really your your wrongdoings to why you guys didn't grow. I think it's your wrongdoings too. You know what I just heard? Somebody cheated on you, you broke up and you got back together. I'm assuming they cheated that based on your storyline. Mm -hmm. They cheated on you, you broke up, yeah. you got back together. I don't know if they cheated again, but something happened again. Then you broke up and you got back together. Yeah. What the hell was the point of breaking up? Because clearly, whatever this man does for you, everything that he may do for you or brings to your life is worth it enough for you to get back with him. Mm -hmm. So I, this is what when Esso was talking about cheating, I can't make it make sense because a lot of women get back with men that cheated on them. But emotional decisions will never make sense. Mm -hmm. and, and that's Thank my you. point. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so, so now we have to get back to the... See, there's... And I've been watching this dude on Instagram named uh, 19 Keys, I believe. Shout, shout yeah, out to yeah, him. He mm -hmm. he's, he's, I don't know who he's that pretty is. dope. He, he brought up this whole thing about logical love versus emotional, emotional love. love. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when you, when you have more emotional love than logical love, the problem that, can, that could happen is emotional decisions can be um, immediate. Yeah. You know, and it could, it's just a cause of, or, or effect sense. of how you feel. Right. Logical, do you mean like you make a decision to love somebody? It's like a cognitive, mm -hmm. um, it's okay. not, it can be a decision, but it's more so like a cognitive version of love. You know what I'm saying? Like, I love you because idealistically you fit what I believe in. Mm -hmm. You know, you are the woman that I truly like, I truly need, vice versa, whatever the case may be. Versus emotional love, like, I love you because the way you make me feel. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I've been on both ends of the spectrum, yeah. but you know what? Honestly, and this is what I'm saying, it does come with time because a lot of the times when you're like, well, why even break up, make up to break up? It's certain things where I was like, I know I'm not standing for that. One, I'm selfish. I don't want to share what's mine because you're not ever going to have to share what's yours, right? I expect the same reciprocity, but I was, go I was still... I was still operating from a, a, a place of emotion, and it really did have me self-reflecting, like, well, damn. Thank you for joining us <laughs> on Eight at the Table. I hope you had a great time. Marvelous night. You're with our special guest here. Me and Marvelous. And, and please subscribe, <laughs> like, comment, and share, and please be in tune every single Thursday. We'll be back here with the hot topics that nobody else wants to talk about. I appreciate y'all for having me on the show. Uh, I think, obviously, like, mental health, and things of that nature need to be spoken about more freely, not just in the black community, not just in the Latin community, but in all communities. Um, we talk too much about how everything is like, you know, mostly mostly mental and like hardly physical, but then no one wants to take care of their mind. Let's bring, I'm, I'm not bring it back, let's make it happen. 
You know what I mean? Like, it's necessary.